So I am super excited to go over this model today, which is Quantum Geometry Learning Systems, or QGLS. And to give you like the upfront differentiators, I'll tell you what it doesn't have. It has no attention mechanisms, so focus emerges from wave-based collapse and not the attention heads. There's no traditional weight layers. Signals are modulated by quantum-inspired topological parameters instead of scalar weights. And third, there's no pure backpropagation. Learning is driven by resonance coherence and topological regularization and interference dynamics. And what I'll show you within this is that without all of these things, without any of these things, this model is scoring as well or better than your typical neural network on tests. And then so uh, I like to give you the shape of this up front, right? So this is what the, the shape of the neural network is. Uh, and it's very specifically a trefoil knot. Um, and then this is the, the like all of the nodes and the connections between the nodes. Um, and then so it's not a traditional feed forward network. Uh, so let me give you like, a, so let's start here, right? Like this is a typical feed forward network. Um, and then so this is how like weights are connected within your uh, typical network, right? So you have um, like your X1, X2, X3, and then you have soft, which are separated by soft mass functions, right? And then so like the X1 and X2 weight, the X1 is connected specifically to like S1, and then X2 would be connected to S1 and S2, and then X3 would be connected to S2. And then you average those out, you split those, and then you, you connect another softmax function. So it's like uh, weights, softmax, softmax, weights, you get kind of like how this works, right? But you can see that they're very much structured and, and, and very much like a, a feed forward flow and a feed forward process. And there's really like two things that um, dictate overall the neural network. First of all, you have uh, the weights and the distribution of these weights and the fact that they're all feed forward and they're all like connected in this, this forward layer like this, right? Uh, and then they do, they do, they back propagate, but they're back propagating the same, like the, in the same direct, like the same connections, right? Uh, and then you have, uh, actually I want to, yeah, this one, uh, is that, um, you have, so weights, this, this, it, like number one is weights and then the connection of the weights. And then number two is the uh, like geometry or the shape of the neural network itself and the, sh the, the space of it. And I've proven over and over again now that uh, the actual shape of the network itself dictates physics within it. So if you are within Euclidean space, that has the different phys that will have a different physics structure and different physics dynamics. Then if it's shaped like a sphere, or if it's shaped in hyperbolic space, and then these gives you give you really good examples here, right? And then especially like hyperbolic space, uh, it's I mean very honestly like um, structured very similarly to a, a like a black hole um, as far as some of the dynamics, right? Because it's you have um, edges, and, and then so the closer that you get to the edges, you run into like geometry problems and things like that. And these are all parts of the physics of these different spaces. So this plus this. Get, allows you flexibility within these spaces, right? But we always like the default framework is this plus Euclidean space. <laughs> like it's so it's it's like like ninety nine percent of networks out there are, are this and uh, Euclidean, and it's always the same, right? Like always those two combinations, and then like maybe a like super out there network will change it to hyperbolic space or include a part of hyperbolic space, right? And it's like woo, but it's still this plus that, right? And it's like not um a lot of like exploration really beyond that. And then the, the uh, third component that I want to introduce within this is uh, resonance. <laughs> resonance is important too, right? It's, it's essentially, um, so within these different spaces, resonance functions differently. So when standing waves are set up in a string, we have resonance. And this occurs when the applied frequency is equal to one of the natural frequencies of the system. And we, we encounter this all the time in, in physical spaces and we can replicate this, right? But when you replicate these things in different digital spaces, you get different outcomes, again, different physics, depending on the different physical spaces. So resonance will function differently in a sphere than it will in hyperbolic space and it will in Euclidean space, and it will function differently in like a pyramid than it will in a sphere, for example, et cetera, right? Just how resonance dynamics works within this. And then so 
knowing all of these things and then putting them all together, that essentially leads me back here right, to, to, to uh, what we're looking at and, and the construction of this overall. Uh, I can explain it here essentially like through the white paper itself, right? So kind of the, the, uh, the core principles are that um, topology is an intelligence substrate um, within this. So nodes are arranged in 3D knot structures forming resonant and tangled network topology. We have an entangled connection layer. So each connection has entanglement coefficients, re uh, resonance phase, and knot tension, creating complex signal modulation analogous to quantum interference. I can leave this whole white paper here for anyone that would want to read through the white paper itself. The bottom line kind of like, uh, so <laughs> this shape, how these connections are, uh, all of this, is, there's a lot of thought that went into this, right? Um, and then um, overall, and then so what this is, is, is essentially, uh, you have classical computers and classical computing and quantum computers and quantum computing. Uh, and then quantum computers and quantum computing rely on qubits, right? They, like they, they need a qubit in order to like uh, be the base function of them. But there's more than just qubits and, and just like the, the like actual like hardware that goes into a, uh, a, a quantum computer, right? Um, a lot of it has to deal with shape, resonance, all of these dynamics. And then so essentially I take like everything except for the hardware, except for the qubit. Um, and then I, I essentially like, I'm like, okay, we're, we're like, we're going to have like, that's going to be a complete classical layer in this instance. And then everything, like literally everything that we lay on top of that is going to be a uh, quantum and quantum mechanics based. So the shape of it, uh, the connections, et cetera, right? And I figured that let's you know, blend the two and, and see how, how that comes out. And then like, really like, so so this is the, the, the like um, the actual like uh, shape of, of this and, and kind of like what is going on here, right? So you have your input lim uh, image, which then gets passed to a linear compression, which then gets passed to the knot space, which then uh, creates a, uh, an entanglement, uh, entangled connection layer, which then gets passed to the resonance layer, which then gets passed down to the entanglement propagator, which then gets passed over to the, the wave-based signal spread, which then gets passed down to the collapse resolution layer, which then gets passed over to a weighted collapse, which then gets passed down to your final linear classifier, which then gets passed over to the output class. And all of that is happening uh, within this shape and within these connections and within these uh, nodes and edges that you're looking at here. And then all of this that is also uh, happening here within these codes. I'm defining exactly like what the topology is, how the framework works, uh, defining resonance and then uh, injecting resonance within the system. So, you know, like making it uh, harmonize and vibrate uh, and then all of those things. And then essentially connecting all of this, uh, creating like like um, a, a weight type of system <laughs> to 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 uh, balance it out again it's not tr no parameters uh, like uh, it is edges and nodes right so uh, that's what I'm utilizing for the weights within that instance and you can see them like the the red uh, nodes in, in in the model right and then all of this is just like a ton of math <laughs> to, to uh, go through computing all of this, like setting up every single class, right? All of the class definitions. So uh, everything that you need essentially to make this network network work. Um, and then it, you get uh, the beautiful shape here. And then here's, you know, exactly like, like this is the, the uh, literal shape of the nodes uh, that you get within it. Uh, and then here's the resonance phase interference matrix that you get. Uh, and then here's the testing, right? So uh, currently right now, like, so after the first epoch, it, uh, uh, was 69%, second epoch 81, uh, third epoch 83. I'm going to honest, I'll let it run uh, for this. I expect it to, my guess would be it's going to run for five epochs and then a clock out around like between 87 and 89% accuracy in the end, which, uh, which puts it very much on par with uh, any other like CNN model or anything else that I've uh, tested on Fashion MNIST data set. Like if you've tested on Fashion MNIST before, my, like, I, I have a, a assumption 
with this data set that uh, a lot of it, some of it is misclassified, right? Like I think it's impossible uh, to get, like if, if a model got, got like uh, really high, it gets really high accuracy on, on fashion MNIST, like that, I think there's something wrong with the test because I think that there's something wrong with a fashion MNIST as a data set overall. So I'm just highlighting and pointing that out, uh, that like this is a high end range for uh, neural networks as far as uh, any performance that I've done. Um, and then so, um, here it is. I have the again the the collab notebook. Uh, it's uh, also in my GitHub repository here. So GQ uh, under GQLS, all of the features and and everything that I've uh, listed out here. Again, it's released under MIT license. Uh, and then I also have a white paper here. Um, so the white paper is Quantum Geometry Learning Systems GQLS or QGLS, a topological framework for entanglement driven AI architecture, and then kind of like um. Uh, the idea behind this is that like uh, I have uh, other models that I've tested like to come up to this <laughs> like like uh, I tested like I uh, started testing like um, quantum wormholes and then I, what I started experimenting with is like like so this <laughs> what we're looking at uh, here is is like very drastically and dramatically different from here right so I didn't start like uh, a to, to like Z3 <laughs> like I went from like a to uh like okay like what if we like um made some of these connections like weird like why do they all have to feed feed forward right like what if that um x1 like what if there was actually a connection between like y2 and x1 like why not like what well, what happened and and then uh i would test it and the model got like you know like around like 80 80 percent or so uh accuracy on mnist and i was like okay there's something there and then so i start playing around with like a superposition and like um a wormhole tunneling and things like that like things that i can play around with with regards towards the quantum mechanics with neural networks if you know understanding the shape of them right and just playing with the shape uh, and then shaping these things out and it ended up like it got really good accuracy like uh like between like 80 and 86 percent accuracy um overall on all those tests <laughs> and then I, it, it just uh led me more and more and then i, I essentially we, we get here right where i'm like okay this is um this is the ideal and this actually works and then i, I i'm stripping out more and more, right? My initial ones are, are were um, still reliant on like softmax and atom optimizers and, and all of that, which again, there's uh, none of that here. <laughs> no attention, no traditional weight layers, no back propagation. Uh, it, what it does have is entangled nodes, wave propagation, collapse resolution, and resonance-based learning. Uh, and then it is uh, released under MIT license, so feel free to do what you would like with this model, and uh, hopefully you like the quantum geometry learning systems, and if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.